And hello. See, this is part two now. See, I got two fingers up there. And I just want to say hello. And what comes to my mind now is the fact that uh, we need to pray. Father God, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this time we have here. I praise you uh, for the opportunity to be able to uh, share psalms and go through the book of psalms with these people. And what came to my mind uh, when I came back, you know, to do restart the podcast or the video stream was the fact that uh, Alexander the Great came to my mind. And um, a lot of times the East and West, what's the difference between the East and the West? Because it seems also confusing. The East, they don't have no particular leaders like... Um, Religious leaders, but they 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 like uh, think about the higher powers in the term of spirituality. But uh, the Western, which thinks they're uh, enlightened, they like to have a head, uh, like a pope or king or queen over something for God. Okay, they need a, a man in place of God. But still, that's all the same thing. That's what they try to do too in the Eastern side. Okay, everyone believes that there's a spiritual power uh, to get uh, to empower you in this world to get ahead. Okay, now you're not gonna get ahead in this world, in this modern world either, unless you have a spiritual power backing you. And I'm gonna say that because there's a war in heaven. And you know what? The war is still going on. It's a war between good and evil. Between light and dark. The war is going on and you're in it. Whether you want to be or not. Alright, you're right smack in the dab middle of it. Because, see, your body has a sin nature in it. And the sin nature is uh, at war with God. All right. And but you know your spirit, your soul, inside of you, you have God inside of you. You have God inside your closet, inside of you, with the holies of holies. He got, gave a piece of Himself and put it inside of you. You have a piece of God inside of you. Okay, God Himself. And he wants to make peace with you. So when you get reborn and you become filled with the Holy Spirit, then the uh, uh, peace is made with God. You're made right. You live for God. And God has, uh, you have surrendered to God. God has conquered you. And I'm not saying God goes around conquering people, but he does it through love. He's won you over, okay? Say, so God has won you over. But if you don't, if, if God can't win you over, if you're too far gone, of course, you're never too far gone until you're dead and in hell. But if, uh, as long as you got breath in your body, you still have a chance. So, but anyway, I'm just illustrating that because uh, whether or not, you know, you get reborn, filled with the Holy Spirit or whatever, delivered, and how far you go with God is really up to you. See, that's your journey. That is your journey. And you can go, uh, you can go uh, either way. So, you are in the middle of a war. You're just like a baby, a bundle of joy, dropped in the middle of a war zone. Say a mama just had a baby and then she got killed. And you're crying there like a baby. Maybe you're two years old, you don't know what's going on, you're helpless. That's how we are. And uh, uh, and we're in the middle of a battlefield and everybody's fighting and there's war going on and you know you don't know if a sword's going to come and we'll lop your head off or not. You don't, don't know what to do. But you, I want the point is, you are in the middle of a war. 
whether you like it or not. You, uh, your husband, your partner, your, your children, your friends, your family, your church, your organizations, your group, your company. See, you think that um, they think, I, I never, don't, don't, don't understand this, uh, the separation of church and state. Okay, the separation of church and state is an impossibility. Church is not ever going to be separated from state. State and church are inseparable. It's just like a yolk and white, right? Can you have a baby chicken if you take half of it away? Okay. State and, and uh, separation of state and religion. Okay. How's that? Okay. Because religion, that would be your heart. And the state would be your mind. Okay, your the spirit would be the religion part. Okay, say the spirit would be the religion part. And your mind would be the state, right? And that would just be nothing but a bunch of dysfunction. And that's what we have going on over there in Washington is a bunch of dysfunction. So, see, you can't separate because... You do what you believe. When you wake up in the morning, you brush your teeth. Why do you do that? Because, you know, you know, you believe that your teeth need to be cleaned. And if you don't, they're going to rot out. Uh, you put a clothes on every day because you believe that you need them. Uh, and, and in fact, we were all clothed with, with light, okay? So, of course we need clothes, okay? But I'm just saying, I mean, you do things because you believe in them. I mean, you cut the lawn because you believe it's better than having weeds all over the yard, okay? You pay your bills because you don't want people, you believe if you don't, people will come and take your things away. So, uh, people in the Congress, people, the senators, the president, are not going to do something they don't believe in. They might lie, their mouth, the, lie about it, okay, but they, they only do what they believe. People only do what they believe, okay, because what you do is what you believe. That's the definition of uh, how you would you know if you want to know what you believe, just watch what you do. No matter, don't listen to what you're saying, what, but what you what you do. And uh, we're talking about Alexander the Great. See what he did, and what I don't understand. See, like I was talking about the pharaohs. They went in the temple and they came out gods, uh, according to the legend. And the presidents, they want them to go into the rotunda and come out uh, spirit-filled with the devil. And kings, uh, they tell the people they want the anointing of, God, anointing of God to come on them for kingship. But actually, they're hoping the devil will infill them. Because they, what they have, they uh, the king of England is the Prince of Wales. Okay, and the Prince of Wales represents what I talked about yesterday is the the red dragon, the deliverer. He's the red dragon. He's he's a beast, the uh, the infilling of the devil, the devil incarnate. Okay, so all these people are hoping the devil will come up and rule the earth, and they're hoping they're hoping the devil is ruling the earth because uh, see they've all submitted. They've all submitted to that thing where in the Bible where the devil come up to Jesus, the three temptations, and says, fall down, you want, you want the earth, you want the world, just fall down and worship me and I'll give you the world. Fall down and worship me and I'll give you the world. Because Alexander the Great, he thought he was like uh, doing the demigod thing and he wanted to do greater works than uh, Achilles. See, Achilles was really a person, and uh, he got he died because someone shot him in the foot with an arrow. He 
he would be like the first ball player, Tom Brady. And somebody do him in, right? So, uh, Alexander the Great would want to be greater than Tom Brady. Okay, well, I mean, I'm not saying these are demigods or anything. But, but you know, some people do to carry it to that extreme. I'm just saying that uh, Alexander the Great went to the temple. They made a temple for uh, Achilles. Uh, so they went to the temple of Achilles, and he made a sacrifice to Achilles. And then the this, this evil spirit went into Alexander because then he went around co actually conquering the world against all odds, odds, against all odds. Because there was a lot against Alexander. He didn't have half the people uh, the uh, emperor had. You know, and then not only do you got to go around getting an army and going around conquering, but you got to pay the people as you conquer. They have to be paid, okay, if they don't get, or if they got, or believe in what you're doing. Because if you don't pay your army, they're going to leave. I guess you would have some people in your army that's in there because they believe in you, and then you'd have some that want to get paid. Which brings me back to, uh, I like this word of uh, name and acclaim it and word of faith, people. Now, there's nothing wrong with the basic principles they're teaching. But uh, uh, when, uh, when they carry to the level of greed, when it gets to the level of greed, then they're like paid mercenaries. They want to be paid for it. A lot of these preachers are just in for the power. Oh, yeah. And here's something the Lord told me he wanted me to tell you. And that is, uh, you cannot have any of Jesus' power without love. And that's why that guy wasn't getting anywhere. i got to write that down. You cannot have any of Jesus' power without love. Because, uh, uh, the reason why is because you have to do everything in Jesus' name. And Jesus, and to do, in, order, in order to do everything in Jesus' name, you have to have Jesus' character. You know, some people in Hollywood call that be, to be in character, but you ha you have to ha you have to be uh, in character. You have to have you have to be in love. Wow, doesn't it? in Jesus' name to be in Jesus' name means. To be in love. Wow. To be in Jesus' name means to be in love. And you know what I'm going to do right now? I'm going to go to this particular website where these uh, people are. And I'm going to type that in. Because uh, I want, I'm going to type it in right here on my website. Okay, let me type that out because I don't forget that. That is so, that's so outstanding, okay? And I'm going to, I'm typing it in right now, and I'm going to make it like, uh, let me see. Oh, I'm going to put some color into it. Okay, I'm going to make one of these right now for you, because for you, I love you. I, I don't see nobody here, but I'm sure that, let me see. I'm going to see if anyone's on my stream right now. Okay, I don't see nobody on my stream, but there will be, okay? Okay, uh, to be in Jesus' name means to be in 
love. To be in Jesus' name means to be in love. There, I'll put it just like that. Oh. Okay. You know, I put the word love there and some of the name about keeps popping up. Now let me see. Oh, my clock's ticking. Even my clock, clock is saying, uh, my alarm bell to get up is going off. Okay. Alright, now let me make a nice one up here on top. I will make one in color. Mmm. Okay, let me see. Oh, an avocado. Uh, let me see what the choices are. Uh, I'm going. I think I'm going with avocado because the avocado is one of the most healthiest things there is. I see a lot of purple stuff in there. Avocado. Okay. All right. No, you know what? I seen something else. I I don't want the avocado. You know what I want? Well, let me see. I'll go with avoc avocado, okay? Okay. To be in Jesus. Uh, means to be in love. See, that's so simple, right? To be in Jesus' name means to be in love. To be in Jesus' name means to be in love. Okay, and we put some hashtags on there. To be in Jesus' name means to be in love. All right. Yeah, I'll go with the avocado because the avocado is fruit, right? That's fruit. Okay, great. And let's see how it looks. To be in Jesus' name means to be in love. Four twenty five right in national. Okay, let's go right here. All right, one more time. I'll post it one more time. Okay. All right. Okay, I'm gonna do a peach this time. Okay. All right, that's so good. I love that. To be in Jesus means to be in love. And I'm going to put down my title. All right. All right. To be in Jesus' name means to be in love, okay? To be in Jesus' name means to be in love, okay? All right, and that's so special. Okay, now we're gonna go back to uh, we're going to go right here to so my e sword. Okay, it's time to go to the uh, scripture, and we're going to go to Psalms chapter fifteen. But I was talking about Alexander the Great, right? Well, he left a sacrifice there, and. Uh, 
He got the spirit. He got that evil spirit inside of him, and he went around conquering the world. And see this. I told you, uh, if you are uh, be successful in this life, you need a spiritual force behind you, right? Now, the spiritual force you should choose is the Holy Ghost, because that's the ultimate. That's the ultimate uh, spirit, the most powerful spirit, and the one that's going to love you. All right. Now the other side that's light. Okay. The other side is darkness, and uh, the devil, the evil spirit, operates like the mafia. Okay. Uh, they are operate like the underworld. What they do is they use you. Right. It, they drain the life out of you. Anything that's not done in love um, is uh, using you. Because love is love gives to you. And hate takes away from you. Okay, darkness robs you. Okay, R darkness take uh, sucks everything out of you. Okay, where uh, life adds to you, uh, and then you add to life. See, there's a synergy uh, where the parts of the the total parts of something are greater when they're all together. That's why the vine works in synergy. But the other way, the we're working in the flesh, it kind of like takes you apart and capitalizes on one part or another part. It doesn't really look at you as a whole, a whole being, okay? It either wants to see your eyes or your face or, you know, your hands or, you know, what you do, one, one piece of you. It just wants to uh, blow up one piece of you, okay? And that could be your ear. It could be something else, okay? Uh, it just wants to blow up one part, part of your body, right? Or one part of your soul, of what you do. It doesn't want to give you a cre credit for your total being, for all that you are, okay? And so you could be in a reach for more, Right? So, let's go to uh, 15 here. Psalm 15. And even when these people, these artists, they make the songs, like like Elvis, say he made all those songs, right? Well, he didn't really write all those songs. Other people wrote those songs too. And other people played the instruments. And other people... You know, did the videos or whatever else they do, or play, uh, wrote the mov movies. So now, what we have is we have uh, like a, you can have like an NFT to have a, a buy a masterpiece of the Mona Lisa, right? So you could divide that Mona Lisa into like an NFT into a million 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 little pieces, and then everyone could own a piece of that. Anyone who had part in a creating that Mona Lisa could have a, a piece of it. Like whether it be the people who made the paint or who made the canvas, who made the frame, who made the brushes, right? Okay? So like an artist, like Elvis Presley, you know, those songs, it, it was back now, you could make like a, turn it like into an NFT type thing where everybody would own, everybody that produced something in the littlest way would own a little piece of the income from that music. You know, instead of not just one person uh, getting the whole pie. See, that's what God does. He makes sure everyone gets the little piece. But the world, someone just hugs it all up. Okay? To be in Jesus' name means to be in love. So, uh, 15, what? And I want to see something here. Oh, yeah, okay.
To be in Jesus' name means to be in love. Okay. Who shall dwell on your holy hill? Okay. Wow. See, this sounds so great because no matter what I say, where I say, it just seems like, you know, uh, when I go turn up to where I'm going to preach, we're well, not preach, but explain. It's right there. <laughs> Who shall dwell on your holy hill? Psalms 15, chapter 1, verse 1. Okay, let's, let's, let's see. Okay. And I know, you know, I'm an old man, right? And, you know, I go with my beard and stuff. They don't do that on TV. But this is my show. You have to get over that. So whatever I do on my show, whether I eat a peanut or I drink some coffee, whatever, that's considered normal. I'm done wearing masks for people <clears throat> or trying to behave a certain way for anybody. I'm not doing it no more. You know, I am finding out what God wants and I'm doing that. <clears throat> Psalms 15.1, a Psalm of David. But first, let's pray for everybody. I pray every man, woman, past, present, future, everyone who wanted my help in their prayer, Lord, where they wrote it down, they buried it in the backyard, or they put it in the Bible, uh, Lord, uh, or they just put it in the back of the mind and they said they uh, wanted my help. Lord, let those prayers be answered, Lord, because it's more important that you get to glory than anyone else. Uh, and let them choose how they're going to uh, <clears throat> praise you for it, whether it is a simple thank you in their heart or praise and go, uh, uh, they're going to sing you a song or they're going to dance in front of you or they're going to pro pro proclaim it to the world in a book or a movie. Lord, let it be your will uh, that they be healed. Lord, your will be done. Lord, let that, uh, it's your will to heal. Okay, that's what I'm saying. Let heaven come to earth let everything be restored, past, present, and future, no matter what it is. Lord, heal all the viruses and people. There's a lot of viruses going around in the world uh, because of the pale horse and any, not even the pale horse, but everything else. Lord, heal all the viruses and all the earth. And no matter where they're located, and especially in people and pets, Lord, and, 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 and even bats, okay? Heal, heal all the viruses, Lord. Heal all the viruses, even if they, they're death diseases, even if they say there's no cure for them, you're the cure. Father God, in Jesus' name, I ask you to heal them in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And then you know what? I ask you, you know, uh, you, you, uh, uh, if you're taking medication, that you should go ahead and continue taking your medication until a doctor tells you that you are well and you don't need the medication. Because you might know you're well, but God, Jesus took his uh, physician with him. Dr. Luke. Jesus took Dr. Luke with him. Alright. So Jesus is not going to put you down for having a doctor. Psalm 15 verse 1. Now see, how would that be to God the Father saying, well Jesus, you know you don't have faith in me because you got the doctor there. You got to get rid of the doctor. No, Jesus had it. The doctor wrote the gospel of Luke. Okay? The gospel testified of Jesus. The doctors testify of Jesus. Okay? All right. Because the, doc the doctors were made by Jesus in the first place. All that wisdom and knowledge comes from Jesus. All right. Who shall dwell in your holy hill? Psalm 15, verse 1. A Psalm of David. Who may worship in your sanctuary, Lord? Who may enter in your presence on your holy hill? Verse 2. Those who lead blameless lives and do what is right, speaking the truth 
from sincere hearts. Three, those who refuse to gossip or harm their neighbors or speak evil of their friends. Four, those who despise fragrant sinners and honor the faithful followers of the Lord and keep their promises even when it hurts. Five, those who lend money without charging interest and who cannot be bribed to lie about the innocent. Such people will stand firm forever. Now, that was the NLT, the National, uh, the, the New Living Standard. Now, let's go to the Message Bible. Who shall dwell in your holy hill? Psalms 15, verse 1. A David's psalm. God, who gets invited to dinner at your place? How do we get on your guest list? Walk straight. Act right. Tell the truth. Don't hurt your friend. Don't blame your neighbor. Despise the despicable. Keep your word even if it costs you. Make an honest living. Never take a bribe. You never get blacklisted if you live like this. Now really, that really uh, tells the way it is. Now I wonder what, um, let me see, what the Amplified, sees, uh, the Amplified Bible says. Okay, Amplified Bible. See, it's, it's good to have like the, uh, the version plus... And then the plus version too, because then after you read the the regular version, you, the, the different words that you want to know about, you can just slide right over there and pick them up. All right. Uh, now, when the Amplified see, Lord, who shall dwell temporarily in your tabernacle? Who shall dwell permanently on your holy hill? Now this is uh, starts off at verse one, and it, it has two questions, and it's going to answer those two questions. The first question is, who shall dwell in your ho in your tabernacle, and who dwell on your holy hill? Okay, who's going to be ter uh, temporarily in your tabernacle, and who shall dwell permanently on your holy hill? And those are the two questions that are going to be answered. Who he who walks and lives uprightly and blamelessly, who walks righteousness and justice. Oh, let me do that again. Verse two. He who walks and lives uprightly and blamelessly, who works righteousness and justice and speaks and thinks the truth in his heart. He who does not slander with his tongue, nor does evil to his friend, nor takes up a reproach against his neighbor, and whose eyes a vile person is despised, whose, and whose eyes a vile person is despised, but he who honors those who fear the Lord, who revere and worship him, who swear to their own hurt, and does not charge. He who does not put out his money for interest to one of his own people and who will not take a bribe against the innocent, he who does those things shall never be moved. So, this is about who shall dwell, Lord, who shall dwell temporarily in your tabernacle and who shall dwell permanently on your holy hill? So you see, this is about this life and the life to come. And just as a quick note, what flashed in my mind, Israel didn't uh, permanently dwell. That 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 uh, their temple didn't permanently dwell dwell uh, uh, on the holy hill. 
because it was knocked over by the Romans. The Romans sat on fire and stole all the gold. And then they carried away to Babylon. Okay, you see that? Who should dwell in temporal area in your tabernacle? And then who should dwell permanently on your holy hill? So that, that, that question there, those two questions, those are, can be, uh, you can meditate on that and you can make them into a whole bunch of questions, okay? That's something that kind of just grows, right? Now let's see the uh, C+. Plus. Okay. All right, the C plus, and uh, uh, the C plus and the C. I don't see any too much of a difference between those two. Okay, uh, it says in uh, uh, Psalm 15, uh, verse 5, uh, he, do, who, he who does not put out his money for interest, uh, oh, I see, uh, to one of his own people, and those who do not take a bribe against the innocent, he who does these things shall never be moved. Uh, there is a, like a note there. They have different notes in there. Uh, but it's nothing like the King J King James Plus. King James Plus has uh, every little word. Okay. He who does not put out his money for interest. Israel was originally not uh, a mercantile people. And the law aimed at the equal, equal uh, diffusion of wealth. Not at enriching some of some while well, others were poor. The spirit of the law still is uh, obligatory obligatory, not to take advantage of a brother's distress to lend him an interest ruinous to him. But the letter law is advocate and a loan at moderate interest is often of great service to the poor. Hence, it is referred to by our Lord in parables Apparently, as a as a lawful lawful as well as recognized usage, the spirit of the law, okay, not to take advantage of someone's distress and put them in ruin at higher interest, but to uh, but to they is I guess it's okay to give them a, a little a small loan at moderate interest. And that'd be a good service to them, okay? So you want to give some, it's, uh, he who does not put out his money for interest to uh, one of his own people. That means uh, it's not wrong to make someone pay you interest, but not high interest. If you give them a, a loan with very low interest to help them, okay? That's what that's saying. So it's not wrong to have, uh, to charge interest to your brother, but not high interest, just low interest. Okay? And then Exodus chapter 22, verses 26 to 20, 25 to 26, Exodus chapter 22, verse 25 to 26, it says, If you lend money to any of my people with you who is poor, you should not be to them as a creditor Neither shall you require interest from them. If you ever take your neighbor's garment in pledge, you shall give it back to him before the sun goes down. Huh. Can you imagine that? That if you wanted uh, something from somebody, if you know, uh, 
if somebody wanted the money from you, they'd actually have to give you their clothes sometimes. If you didn't have anything, if you, all you had was your bed, because they used to carry their bed around uh, a rug, you'd have to give them your bed. Or if you had to, uh, if you wanted a small loan because you wanted to make some money real quick, uh, you'd have to give them your clothes so they trust you. Isn't that something? That's kind of wicked right there. So let's see what it says. Um, let's go to the King James Version. All right. Okay. He who dwell on your holy hill. Who shall dwell on your holy hill? Psalm 15. A Psalm of David. Lord, uh, Lord, who shall abide in thy holy hill? Who shall dwell in thy holy hill? He that walketh uprightly and worketh righteousness and speaketh the truth in his heart. Verse 3. He that backbiteth not with his tongue, nor dwelleth, nor doeth evil to his neighbor, nor taketh up a reproach against his neighbor, in whose eyes a vile person is condemned. No, uh, not condemned. In whose eyes a vile person is cont uh, contemned. I'm gonna have, we're going to look the definition of that. Okay, I'm going to look the definition of that. Cause, uh, it's uh, C-O-N-T-E-M-N-E-D. Let's see what that is. Okay, because we know God don't condemn people. Okay, here it is. It means ka. Let me see. Contempt. 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 Contem, okay? All right. Uh, in whose eyes a vile person is contem, but he honors them that fear the Lord, he sh he, that he sweareth is in his own hurt and changes not. And what that is, is uh, uh, con uh, contem contempt, okay? Contempt means to despise, scorn, to look down on, disdain, slight. Okay? Alright, what's uh, slight mean? Definition of slight. Small in degree. Inconsiderable. To a slight... Oh, okay. Oh, Okay, you know what that means? To look down upon them, you know, to look down your nose or something, you know. Uh, to to hold that person as no value. Okay. To, okay. So, let's see. Let's go back down to uh, King James Plus. Alright, let's finish this. Uh, uh, King James verse 5. He, uh, 15 verse 5, He that putteth out his money to usury, neither take reward against the innocent. He that dwell, doeth these things shall never be moved. Let us go. Alright, here's the King James Version Plus. And we'll go, uh, go with that word. Contem, contem, it's not condemned. 
but it's just looked down upon, okay? Despise, sustain, thank to scorn a vile person. And let's see what scorn is, okay? Uh, scorn. Scorn defined. That's probably tear down or something. The feeling or belief that someone or something is worthless or despicable. Okay? Uh, Deseration. To feel, okay, uh, deride. Okay? Let me see. So it's just thinking that people are worthless. Okay? So let me see. Uh, and whose eyes... Uh, a vile person. Okay, let's see what a vile person is. Uh, it's maas in the in the Greek. Maas. Okay. Uh, to disappear. Uh, that word condemn, contend, con, contem. Despise, disdain, loathe. Melt away, refuse, reject. Oh, you reject this person. Retrobate. Oh, consider him a retrobate. A vile person. Okay. In whose eyes? Okay. In your eyes. Let me see. Someone before you. Your displeasure, discontinence. Okay. Uh, I guess uh, no favor. You know, you don't want to give him an audience. You don't want to listen to him or anything, right? Uh, that kind of stuff. How you think about him. So basically, that's a judgment against somebody, okay? Uh, but certainly, we don't judge people because we are in the New Testament. In the Old Testament, they used to, they couldn't have, they really didn't have power over the devil, right? They couldn't, uh, cast the devil out of people so they had to remove the whole unit so they used to stone people um, they get rid of all the people okay um, by stoning them when when people sin they used to stone them but not uh, Moses came by the law but Jesus came by grace and truth because uh, the Lord gave Jesus power. He gave him the Holy Ghost. And Jesus could cast the problem out. And save the people. So. Uh, that's what we're to do. We're to do what Jesus did, did. Because we're in Jesus. We are in love with people. Okay, it, to be in Jesus' name means to be in love. So we're in love with people, uh, no matter who they are. Okay, even the vilest of person can be saved. Okay, even the, the vilest of people can be saved. Like unbelievers are pigs. Even pigs can be saved. Although it might be difficult, but all in God. All things are possible. It says you can't make your the ear of a pig, you know, into a, a pearls uh, a, a, a a purse for your pearl. Okay, but that's the Old Testament. Okay, pigs ear pearl Bible. Okay, let's see. Pigs or pearl Bible. Let's see what comes up. Okay. Matthew 7. Verse 6 through 8. Don't throw pearls to pigs. Okay. And, uh, you know, there's also a gateway Bible. There's Bibles online you could utilize, like the gateway Bible. Okay. 
Matthew chapter 7, verse 6 through 8. God's Word Translation Don't throw pearls to pigs. Don't give what is holy to dogs. Or throw your pearls to pigs. Otherwise, they will trample them. Or tear you to pieces. The power of prayer. Okay. Now, here's the thing. Uh, a pig and a dog was a uh, you know something something that was uh, not believing. Those are things. Those are people who are not accepting of God's word. Okay. Now there might be people in confusion that uh, are accepting of God's word. But they're just confused. They're trying to find their way out. They're in a, lost in a maze and they're trying to find their way out. They're lost in a matrix, okay? So what are you going to do? Are you just going to uh, stone those people? Or are you going to help them out? Because here's a perfect example right here with this woman they threw to Jesus. They brought her and threw her down in front of Jesus uh, to get him to mess up. To put a stumbling block in front of him. But to be in Jesus' name is to be in love. So Jesus was in love with her. He was in love with all people. Not as a lover, but as a lover of their soul. So he wanted her to be free. And he, he talked to her and explained to her all that she was and all she could be. And uh, put her in a, look, made her look, let her look at herself in a different light. And he dispelled the darkness and told her that she was delivered and uh, that she didn't have to work that way no more. That she could uh, walk to serve God. So once you're delivered of sin, you're going to serve God. Because you don't want the, you want to keep your house filled with the Holy Ghost and you don't want those devils coming back. Because when they come back, they come back seven times harder. Seven times worse. All right. So again, let's look in a parallel Bible, and uh, you can just look that up in the Bible. Sometimes, if you're curious about things they say, and I'll expl expl if you're curious about some things they say, and uh, I don't say them good enough to your satisfaction, then you need to look them up some more. Okay. If it's a history thing, you got the Curiosity Channel. Curiosity stream, or if it's a Bible question, just like all the translations on the Bible, or you can go to sermonaudio.com, sermonaudio.com, S E R M O N A U D I O dot com, sermon audio, and they have every, they have like a million uh, sermons they collect from all the preachers. And they have, uh, they're ranked according to uh, how, how, uh, the ones that are real good, they get the most hits. So you, you could get the best sermons preached on any verse of the Bible. Sometimes they have serious, a series on topics. So if you want to know about a topic, you can get that too. They uh, have the Bible all kinds of different ways. All right, now let's look at this. Okay, I'm in the uh, parallel Bible, and I want to read. Oh, the Lord told me that I need to go to compare it to that one verse. Okay, uh, the one verse, number four. Okay. And uh, his, uh, Psalms 15, verse four. And we're in the uh, Compare Bible, and I'm going to read it to you. I'm going to read you all the translations, and then from there, it'll be up to you. Okay? Because there's only so much I can do. I mean, you know, you have to take it to the Lord in prayer. All right. Uh, Psalms 15.4. Amplified C. In whose eyes a vile person is despised? But he who honors those who fear the Lord, 
who revere and worship him, who swears to his own heart and does not change, in whose eyes a vile person is despised, but he who honors those who fear the Lord, who revere and worship him, who swears to his own heart and does not change. You know, when I was reading that, something came up to me, you know, I mean, uh, a, th a thought, thoughts come up to me, a revelation, if you want, uh, something from my spirit. So the woman was uh, thrown in front of Jesus, right? And it says, in whose eyes a vile person is con tam or despised. It's not condemned, but looked down upon. Okay, what, so, so what did Jesus do? Ultimately, uh, that was uh, looking at her, he seen the war between the spirit and the flesh. Because there were, they had the war between the spirit and the flesh, even though the sin was forgiven once a year, right? But uh, there's still a war going on there. So the flesh is what Jesus looks down on. He doesn't look down on the soul. The soul can be changed. The on and off switch. He looks down on the person who got the switch to the flesh. So what he did when he seen Mary, all he need, all he, what he knew, he knew he needed to do was so flip the switch from the uh, flesh to the spirit. So uh, first he did that with all the people. Right by right, showing them, writing down in the sand their sins, right? And he was flipping their switches from the flesh to the spirit. Okay? So when they all left, when all those, uh, and you can do the same thing with thoughts, right? Just flip the switch, just like we did here, from the flesh to the spirit. Okay, look at it with good energy. Look at it with uh, love in, in, in Jesus. Look at it in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, when we're in Jesus, we're in love. Okay, the flesh was a problem. The body of death was over that woman. Her flesh. And those demons trying to control her flesh. Okay, so what? Uh, but he who honors... Those who fear the Lord, who reverence and worship Him. All right, you see, she worshipped Him. She didn't hate God. She was just kind of a problem. Uh, she was a daughter of Abraham, and then uh, it says, "He that sweareth to his own hurt." And changes not. Uh, he who swears to his own hurt and changes not. Okay? Uh, he that swears to his own hurt and changes not. I'll uh, keep your word even if it costs you. Let's see. He who swears not uh, to his own hurt and does not change. Uh, and keeps his promises even when it hurts. Okay, keep their promises even when it hurts. All right, there. Okay. Keep your promises to the Lord. Be faithful to the Lord, even when it hurts. So when Jesus was writing down all their sins, that must have touched the heart. That hurt them a little bit. But sometimes the truth hurts. And you know what happened there? All those thoughts went away. All those people went away. So Mary, Jesus looked at her and said, So Mary, all those thoughts you thought about yourself didn't really matter because, you know, it was the flesh, the sinful flesh from Adam you inherited. It was iniquity through your family. But, you know, Mary, we know you want to do right. You live for Jesus from now on. And if you flip your switch to the spirit. And don't go down to uh, solve your problems through the flesh no more. A lot of times people want to solve their problems through the flesh. And the flesh always takes. Just remember... Flipping your switch to the flesh is going to the negative. Uh, uh, and your money, finances, health, wealth, 
future. Flipping your switch to the spirit is going up. Positive investments, colorful life, beautiful family. Now flipping your switch to uh, the flesh is black and white. The matrix, mechanical. Flipping your switch to the spirit is color, right? Spirit, heart, warmth, love. Okay, flipping your switch to the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, all the fruits of the spirit. And flipping your switch to the flesh is hate, wickedness, deceit, lies, um, poop. Okay, and flipping your switch to, uh, to the um, to spirit is cake, fruit. You know, beautiful meat. You know, and sometimes all that, uh, what, 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 and in the middle of all that, between your, your flipping this way and that way, you got bitter herbs, okay, to eat with your meat. Bitter herbs, okay, bitter herbs. All right, so uh, the cross, never forget the cross, the blood of Jesus over you, the blood of Jesus of your family, the blood of Jesus of this telecast, the blood of Jesus over all the future people that want to see it. Lord, send angels, don't let you move all hindrances in the name of Jesus. Remove all hindrances in the name of Jesus. Lord, we don't talk about nobody. Lord, we lift everybody up in prayer. Lord, uh, we just talk about uh, how the flesh, the narcissistic flesh, hindered the spirit of a man to try and do good. And just so other people could learn, and so they could go forward, and that's the only reason, Lord. Lord, you know, I I know, uh, you know, for forty years I prayed and, and tried to talk to people about, you know, uh, try to get them to see and heal the eyes, Lord, Lord Jesus. But you're the only healer. You're the only one that knows how to touch people's hearts, Lord. Lord, without them bar barring you, but Lord, I'm I'm finally glad they got help. Okay. Because it's you that count and nothing else. I'm flipping my switch to the spirit, okay? And I'm going in the spirit. I'm going to, uh, uh, if you want to name and claim something, name and claim the spirit land. I'm flipping my switch to the spirit. Okay, now will be a good time to put on some Elvis Presley music. Uh, he sometimes he's saying Amazing Grace. And some gospel music, because Elvis Presley, we talked about him. He plays gospel music, too. At the same time, he's on the stage touching his thighs and, and shaking his booty and all that other stuff. So we know that he loved the Lord, but he was also like a little bit into the uh, fleshly dances. So, you can see the flip of the switch. Okay? But let's flip the switch and stay in spirit. Okay? Amazing grace. Oh, uh, amazing. Uh, amazing. Uh, 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 tuner. Tuner. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like us. <coughs> we <coughs> once were lost, <coughs> but now are found. And are all the sands of time of eternity. <coughs> See, we're lifted from the sands of eternity to the celestial shores. And we're lifted from the sands of the sea to the celestial shores. In a twinkling of an eye. Amen, brothers and sisters. Thank you for watching. <clears throat> this has been Daniel's Prayer. We do one for every day of the week. And uh, 
Yeah, I'll, I always want them ready so you can view them from 8 to 10 o'clock on YouTube. And they're, they're early now on, on Facebook uh, sometime in the morning because I don't sleep at night, okay? All right. So we thank you, Lord. We praise your holy name. Thank you so much, Jesus. And to bring other people, okay? Don't forget to share, subscribe, and comment. And see if you can get one or two, so, some more people to join your channel, okay? In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>